channel. Today I'm going to talk about analytical technique on the use of pipettes and burettes. Now before I start talking about them, um, before you use any volumetric glassware, you need to calibrate them. Now calibrating will help you to get accurate results and it will help you to also know the error margin of the volumetric glassware you are working with. But fortunately for me, all the glasswares we use in my lab are all calibrated by the manufacturer. So we don't calibrate them. But if your glassware you are using is not calibrated by the manufacturer, you need to calibrate them. Now, liquids are calibrated at 20 degrees Celsius. 20 degrees Celsius. So now, I have here with me pipettes and burettes. Now, when you look at the pipette, the expanding region of the pipette, you will see the temperature written on it, 20 degrees Celsius, which means that this pipette was calibrated at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. It applies for the burette as well. The burette too is here. It's written here, 20 degrees Celsius. And you can see the error margin on it. It is plus or minus 0.05. Yes, there, there is error margin on the pipette as well. And I have here with me measuring cylinder. It is also calibrated at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. And the error margin is there as well. It, see, it applies to the volumetric flux. The volumetric flux is here. The temperature is here. Okay, so you can see that if you want to um, calibrate any liquids at all, then you need to calibrate it at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Now, the reason why we calibrate it at 20 degrees Celsius is that from our knowledge in ideal gas law, especially um, from Charles' law, we know that increase in temperature causes expansion. And when there is expansion, it's going to increase um, volume. And what happens to concentration? Concentration will be decreased. So based on our knowledge on Charles Snow, that is why liquids are always calibrated at 20 degrees Celsius, which means that a standard lab is supposed to have a temperature between 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, a standard lab, okay? So before you work with any glass reservoir, you have to calibrate them. Now after calibrating, you have to check for any breakages or any leakages on the um, the glassware before you work with. After checking that, then you come to the pipette. You come to the pipette. Now, this pipette is called transfer pipette. We have different types of pipettes, but this is called transfer pipette. This is what we normally use in my lab, transfer pipette. We have other types, and I have another one here. This is measuring pipette. You know, there are two different things. This is transfer, this is measuring pipette. We have micro pipette. Those pipettes, you can find it in the microbiology labs or the medical labs. We don't use them here, but what we use is the transfer pipette. And that's what I'm going to talk about. Now, after checking if it is calibrated, then you have to um, check if it is clean. You have to check if it is clean. How do you know if a glassware is clean or not? Now, when the glassware is clean and you run water, distilled water through it, the water should be able to flow evenly inside the glassware. When you see droplets of water forming on the insides of the glassware, it means the glassware is contaminated. So that is one way you can know if the glassware is clean or not. So now I'm going to demonstrate to you how to clean any glassware at all. So I'm going to use the pipette as demonstration. Now, this is my distilled water. Okay, so I'm going to clean it by first rinsing it with distilled water. If you don't have distilled water and have the ionized water, you can use it. So you pour a little amount of the distilled water in a clean beaker. In a clean beaker, then I use, I'm not going to use my mouth. So I have there with me pipette bulb. That's what is going to aid me to draw the water. So I'm going to fill the water up to just the lower part of the expanding region. You don't need to fill it to the calibration mark, you know, just a little bit lower at the expanding region. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I think this is okay. So now I will take it off. 
then I'll clean. You see, when you take it out, the water will be coming out. So you have to block it with your forefinger. Now, this is how you rinse the pipette with the distilled water. So you have to hold the pipette in the horizontal position. Then you move the water in it like this. Now, if you turn it upright, the water will fall. So you have to rinse it. So this is how you rinse the pipette with distilled water. Okay. So when you are done, then you discard it into um, another beaker. Okay. So now when you are when you want to dispense the liquid in the pipette, this is how you do it. Okay. You tilt the um, conical flax. You tilt it like this. Then you hold the the pipette. Sorry, at a vertical position. You hold it at a vertical position. You know that the tip of the pipette is touching the walls of the conical flax. Okay. So this is how you hold the pipette. It should be vertical. Now, when all the water has come out, you have to wait for 10 seconds. You have to wait for 10 seconds. You don't have to take the pipette. Immediately, everything comes out. You have to wait for 10 seconds. Okay, so after waiting for 10 seconds, now you rotate the pipette at 360 degrees. You rotate it. So while the tip is touching the conical flask, I'm rotating it at 360. Then you take it off. Now, the reason why we rotate it at 360 is because, you know, if you don't rotate it at 360, you will see that there is a droplet of the water or liquid at the tip. At the tip of the pipette so we don't want that to happen so when you rotate it it's going to break the surface tension at the at the tip now sometimes it's funny when students are doing it and they don't rotate it you see that the the droplet of the solution will be hanging and you see students doing this they will try to do this for the water to come out some to the blow air inside the pipette no please this pipette is not a blowout pipette you have a pipette called blow out pipette. That is when you can blow air, but this one you don't blow air. So just rotate it at 360 degrees and it will take off the, the, the solution that normally hangs out, okay? Then you put it down. Now, ideally, when you are drawing from a solution or water, you are supposed to clean the tip of the pipette. You clean the tip of the pipette, okay? But students normally do it, but ideally that's what you are supposed to do. So now my pipette is clean. I've rinsed it with distilled water. So now I can pipette the solution I'm supposed to pipette. Okay. Now, when you are pipetting from the solution, I've seen students who do this, who put the pipette directly into the volumetric flask to pipette from it. Please, we don't do that. Don't do that. You take another clean beaker, then you pour a little amount of the solution then you pipette from the beaker don't pipette straight from the volumetric flask it is not done it's unacceptable okay so now that is clean now i have to rinse the pipette again with the solution that i'm supposed to pipette so you rinse it three times the reason why we rinse it three times is to um, avoid dilution okay to avoid dilution so you draw again using the same procedure I did for the water. You draw again. You draw again like this at the lower region. You take the pipette ball off. Then you block this side. You hold it in a horizontal position. You try to move the solution in it. Okay, then you discard, you discard it, sorry. You discard it just like I showed you. I showed you when you are discarding, you hold the pipette in a vertical position. So when everything is out, you wait for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, then you rotate the pipette at 360 degrees. So you raise the solution three times. After raising it for three times, then now you can finally pipette your solution and use it for titration. Now, after dispersing the water, you can see that there is a little bit of the solution left here. 
it is left here students normally get confused okay so when you ask them to write sources of error they write this as an error no please this thing has been taken care of by the manufacturer when the manufacturer was calibrating the pipes it took care of this liquid so this liquid here is not going to affect your result it doesn't mean that the water you dispense is not up to 25 million. no it has been taken care of so don't don't get worried if some of the solution is, is trapped here it has been taken care of so these are some of the analytical techniques on the use of the pipettes so now i'll go to the burette so now the burette as i said you should be cal all the fish should be calibrated at 20 degrees Celsius. it is there and the error margin is also written there now this part of the burette is called the barrel barrel and this one normally students call it tap it's not tap the actual name is teflon stop cup that is the right name Teflon stop cup, but because it looks like a tab, we call it tab. Sometimes I also see that, but that is the right way. If you cannot say the Teflon, if it is too big for you, you can say stop cup for short. Teflon stop cup. Now, when you want to mount the burette, again, you have to check for any breakages or any leakages. Okay. Now, if you want to fill, raise the pipettes. Sorry, the burette. If you want to fill it with distilled water to clean it. Now, if you are short like me, um, normally when students who are short like me, you see them raising their toes like this, please. That is why the clamp, you can easily adjust it. So just adjust it, bring it lower to your eye level. Hmm? Make sure the tip doesn't touch the ground. So you see, you can bring it down like this. And you fill it. After filling, then you, you take it up. Please don't be doing this or don't wear and call your colleague from a different group who is taller than you to fill it for you. You can adjust it to any length you want, okay? Then you fill it, the pipe, the funnel is here. So you fill it. You fill it. As you are filling, you check for leakages. Okay, so it's not leaky. So now I can continue. I can continue to rinse it with the salt water. to fill everything to the zero mark. Some students do that. If you do that, you are going to waste my solution. So I filled it up to about 10 mil. So 10 mil, you hold it in the horizontal position, just like I did for the pipette. You try to move the water, okay, so that it can raise the walls of the burette, okay. Then after that, you clamp it back clamp it back then you can dispense your water okay you dispense it and you are done so after rinsing it with distilled water then you rinse it again with your titrant the titrant is the solution that's supposed to be in the burette so you rinse it again with your titrant three times to to avoid um, dilution okay and you can also see that there, there is some liquid at the tip of the red. It's the same explanation I gave that of the pipette. It has been taken care of by the manufacturer. So when you see this, don't get worried, okay? So now that I've raised it with the salt water, you repeat it uh, with the, the titran, but this time around three times, then it means that your burette is clean now, then you can start with your titration. So this is all about the analytical techniques on the use of the pipettes and the burette. So if you are not doing the right thing, please, I have taught you how to use the pipette and the burette. Keep on practicing and you become perfect. So I've come to the end of today's video. Today I talked about analytical technique on the use of pipettes and the burette. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bring you another video on another different volumetric class. I'll talk about the uh, sorry.
sorry, volumetric last rate. So I'll talk about the volumetric last and the balance and the balance. How to use the volumetric last and the analytical balance. So I will see you again another time. Please stay safe and bye bye for now.